different is better than better. Good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Today is Q&A day. Roll the intro. Listen y'all, these kids want to act up in school, want to go to school and embarrass you. Now, somebody asked me about pure street-oriented tyres for the Himalayan. Now, I'm probably the wrong person to ask for this, because I've got Metas EO7s on here, which is a sort of 50-50 off-road tyre. It's hard to find just a, a straightforward street-oriented tyre for a profile that's as narrow as this, especially the front tyre on a Himalayan. So, my instinct is that I would go for maybe the seat tyre, which is the stock tyre, or maybe even the Pirelli MT60. As I say, I'm no tyre expert. Yeah, The tyres I use tend to be for street and off-road. But if you're looking for a pure street-bred uh, tyre, then I'm not 100% sure. So if anybody knows, perhaps maybe put comments below, help this guy out. Do I still intend to travel? Yes, I do. Yeah, if you've followed me for the last three and a half months, then you'll know that my initial plan was to get this bike across a little tour of Europe and then out the far end of Europe, yeah, maybe through the stands up towards Russia. Present circumstances have scuppered that slightly, and who knows when that's going to change, yeah, but it doesn't mean that it's off the cards. I still intend to do that. But in the meantime, we'll make some YouTube videos here in Scotland. Am I going to install an LED headlight on the Himalayan? No. I'm quite happy with the Osram Nightbreaker bulb that I've installed on there before. I might be tempted to put auxiliary lights on here at some point in the near future though. I asked if this was my first YouTube channel. The answer to that is yes. I did make a video, one video last year, which I posted up onto YouTube when I was still in Indonesia. But I took that down again, it's been delisted. But it's something that I might put up just, you know, for, for fun at some point in the future. Things like booster plugs, um, you know, maybe an upgraded to HT lead type thing, moving the airbox or sensors, maybe even something like a sort of Powertronic ECU. Am I going to install that type of thing? Well, I'm not going to write the idea off completely, but the, the straight answer is probably not right away. I'm kind of happy with way, the way that the bike is configured at the moment. This was a good one. Why do you carry fuel cans in the UK? Surely that's some kind of vanity statement. Well, not all parts of the UK are created equal. Yeah? And good luck trying to find a petrol station open somewhere remote in the Scottish Highlands on a Sunday. And that aside, I might be out doing some wild camping and stuff like that. Maybe I want to carry water in one and fuel in another. So it's not something that I think is necessary for absolutely everybody every single day. I fully intend to take this bike well beyond the borders of Europe someday. The relays and do I have stalling issues and that type of thing? No, it's not something I've suffered from, but I've read about it so often in some of these forums, it's made me a little bit paranoid, and the relays are not expensive, yeah? But it seems to be an issue that's particular with a certain run of the newer bikes, the BS6 model, rather than the BS4 that I've got here. One of the videos where I received the most hate was the top speed video, yeah? The top speed of a Himalayan fully loaded, uh, in particular because I didn't use a GPS system. I just used the speedo. The comments were so bad, some of them, that I actually had to remove them, and that's not something that I do, but if people decide they're gonna be offensive, then unfortunately, in all honesty, who cares about the top speed of a Royal Enfield Himalayan? The real point of that video was not really, how fast can I get this bike to go? The real point of that video was, do you really want to? Yeah, because if you watch the video all the way to the end, I say it's not particularly smart to be riding this bike for prolonged periods of time at 80 miles an hour. Hitchcock's cam or the new tech cam that's come out? Well, for me at the moment, the jury's out on either of these things. If I were going to go for either of them, it would probably be the tech cam. I'm not particularly worried about the amount of power that this bike outputs. I'm quite happy with, uh, the, with the configuration as I see it is at the moment. That doesn't mean that I would rule it out in the future. There's a YouTuber called Nathan the Postman. Um, he does bike tours and all that sort of thing. Now, I trust he's a very straightforward guy. He's going to put a tech cam in his 2018, I believe it's 2018 or 2019 Himalayan. I'd be interested to see how that pans out for him. 
as I say, he's the type of YouTuber that you can trust, you know, quite implicitly. He's no nonsense type of guy. So I'm going to watch that with interest. Another common question I get, I don't know why, is what does the bike idle at? Now, this bike idles hot and cold around somewhere between 1100-1200 RPM. Tubeless tyres on the Himalayan at some point. Again, it's not something that I would rule out. I'm not going to rush out there and do it, but once I start to travel longer distances, perhaps across the continent, it's definitely something that I would look into. It's not difficult to get the wheels off the Himalayan. Yeah, it doesn't take particularly long to, to switch out that inner tube. And again, inner tubes for these are, are relatively inexpensive. This is a good point, and I think it's something that needs to be addressed. And Stephen, Stephen M said to me that, you know, why so many videos? You know, I've made like 60 plus videos in the last uh, three, three and a half months. Is that overkill? Well, yes it is, and no it isn't. Yeah, just let me explain. YouTube's a tough gig these days. There's a lot of people out there, guys, that are doing the same thing. YouTube rewards hard work, actually. It's like any job, I suppose, and I, I do treat this a little bit like a job, yeah? I'm trying to make something of this. The average time that people take to get to a 1,000 subscribers, believe it or not, is somewhere between 15 and 22 months. Over the last three months, if I had been putting out one video a week, I would have produced probably about 12 to 16 videos at the moment, rather than 60. Now, I was at 16 videos and I still had less than 100 subscribers, okay? So what that means is if I had followed that path, there's a real possibility that the people who are asking me these questions still wouldn't have found me yet. Now, whilst I don't want to be making four and five videos a week, because I do believe it is overkill, it's too much, but now that I've got 1,000 subscribers and I've got over 4,000 hours watch time, which Again, is another reason I was ploughing out those videos. It's really hard to achieve that. Think about how many hours people need to sit and watch my five-minute videos. But fuel's expensive, guys. And I'm running this bike a lot. Probably more than the average person because I have a YouTube channel centred around the bike. Yeah. So if YouTube can start to pay me back a little bit of money to put some fuel in this tank occasionally, then... Of course, I want to be monetized. Now, Hybrid asks about broken frames near the front of the bike here and potentially leaking heads. Now, it's not something that tends to plague any of the newer bikes. It's something you see quite often, particularly in some of the older forums when the Himalayan first came out, so 2015, 2016. There was a certain run of bikes there, particularly the rental bikes that were going out up and down around the mountains and were breaking the frames and stuff. But... To be honest, all of those early issues with the Himalayan, with the first run models, most of those issues have been addressed over the years. What do I use to clean and lubricate the chain? Now, there's a lot of different products you can use. Personally, recently, certainly for the last six months or so, I've been using iPod. You know, iPod to clean the chain and iPod Ex Extreme, which is an off-road based lubrication. Now, you want to save money, use something like gear oil. Let's talk about the things that I'm going to do, yeah? I'm going to sort out the condensation on this uh, cluster at some point. What I might do is add some heated grips on here. So if I go down the road of installing USBs, I put heated grips, potentially some auxiliary lights in here. I would be tempted to put some type of delayed switch relay in there. There's, there's certain relay systems you can buy that will hold back that power for maybe about 8 seconds or so before it feeds some of the auxiliaries that you add to the bike. Yeah, I think given the battery is not particularly strong on the Himalayan, I think that's probably a good idea. The next spark plug is going to be an Iridium plug. Different is better than better. Now that's a quote by a lady called Sally Hogshead. Now it's something that I kind of aspire to in this uh, YouTube world. I've been asked, what is with all the history stuff and, and, and you know, how does that tie in with the motorbike? Well. For a start, the Royal Enfield is the oldest motorcycle manufacturer in the world. And it's one of the reasons that I bought Royal Enfield in the first place. Because you probably have picked up that I'm a bit of a history buff. And in this world, you either need to be first or you need to be the best. Yeah? And if you can't be the first and you can't be the best, then you absolutely need to be different. Otherwise, what's the point? And travel in general, because travel is my thing, guys. Yeah? <laughs> I've been living abroad. 
for years and years and years, yeah? It's only very recently that I've been back in the UK. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop, you know, with the sort of history vlogs and all the other things that I do with the bike and all the other types of videos that I make. It just means that I might be doing it in Bulgaria. <laughs> it might mean that I'm doing it in, in Georgia. It might mean that I'm doing it in Croatia. Anyway, that's it for this one. I really hope you liked it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. Maybe even hit the notification bell so you know the next time I upload a video to YouTube. I'll see you in the next one.